Cookies or mini tarts? Either way, finished fruit-filled pinwheel delights are tasty sweet treats perfect for the holidays. These tender shortbread artistic cookies with dollops of sweet homemade dried fruit filling are a must try. While prune filling is traditional, you can use your favorite dried fruit instead like cranberries, cherries, blueberries, dates, apricots, or figs. Why not add these pretty winter treats to your cookie platter? They are quite addicting. Well-known holiday Finnish pinwheel cookies are called Joltrutu. Recipes vary from a simple shortbread of flour, ricotta cheese, and butter to a puff pastry crust to a tender sugar cookie. For my version, I went for a soft, light, tender cookie base using cream cheese that resembles my family's favorite sugar cookie. We absolutely love these. Let's check them out. For the ingredients to make the filling, you'll need pitted prunes or preferred dried fruit, granulated sugar, and water. The cookie dough includes all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, cream cheese, butter, granulated sugar, egg, and vanilla. We begin by making the dried fruit filling. So in a medium saucepan, we're gonna add 283 grams, which is a 10 ounce package of prunes, or dried plums if that sounds better to you, or other dried fruit, dried cranberries or such. To that, we're gonna add 50 grams, which is a quarter cup of granulated sugar, and then 118 milliliters, which is a half a cup of water. And then just give that a quick stir. Over the stove, turn your burner onto medium-high heat until boiling. Once your water begins to boil, you can turn down the heat, leave it at a simmer, and you're going to cook the prunes for 15 to 20 minutes until they have softened and can easily be broken down. Add additional water if necessary if the water begins to evaporate and the prunes begin to dry. Using my rubber spatula, notice how that spoon just breaks through these prunes. We're gonna place our softened prunes in a food processor and then we're gonna pulse them until they have broken down to a good spreadable consistency to put onto our cookies. If your mixture is a little bit thicker than you want, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water uh, just because I want it to be able to easily put it on my cookie, but at the same time, I don't want it so wet that it's going to spread and run, particularly as it bakes. But once it cools, it will thicken a little bit, so you may add just a little bit of water. Okay, check out the consistency. They're sticky. They'll hold their shape well as they are baking in the oven on the cookie, and they'll maintain that sturdiness um, once they have cooled. So for me, I like this consistency and this texture. They're not too jammy but they're more of a sticky filling. You can make this filling days in advance and then just store it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. Let's make the cookie dough. So in a medium bowl, we're gonna add the dry ingredients. We're gonna start with 360 grams, which is three cups of all-purpose flour. Add in four grams, which is one teaspoon of baking powder, and three grams, a half a teaspoon of salt. And then give them a quick mix to combine. In a stand mixer bowl or large bowl, if you need to do this by hand, we're gonna add 226 grams, which is an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese, and 113 grams, which is one stick or four ounces, or half a cup, of softened butter. And if your butter has not softened yet, you can place it in the microwave. Dicing it first helps for 10 seconds, and then it should be just right. Okay, you're gonna use your paddle attachment or an electric mixer by hand if you need to. We're gonna blend the butter and the cream cheese for about a minute on medium speed until smooth and creamy. That looks fantastic. Scrape down the butter and cream cheese. With the machine on low, we're gonna add in 200 grams, which is one cup of granulated sugar. While it's still on low, we're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm gonna crack an egg in a separate bowl to eliminate any shells or a bad egg. I'm gonna give that egg a quick beat and we're gonna add it to our mixture. And blend low, medium speed until your mixture is light and fluffy. With the machine on low, now we're just gradually gonna add in our flour mixture here. Add a little at a time, allowing the butter to absorb some of the flour and blend it in well. Okay, that's a consistency that your dough should look like. The dough will harden as it sits in the fridge, it'll become a thicker dough. Scrape down the sides of your bowl to get all that dough down into a mound. I'm moving to a steadier spoon. Then we're gonna divide it in half 
and just plop it down on two pieces of plastic, each half. Right now it's a sticky dough, but it will firm up. Then within each plastic wrap, you wanna shape it into a rectangle as best as you can, a square rectangle. So you don't see how easy it comes together when it's in the plastic. Cover it up. Place both in the refrigerator for one to two hours until they firm up so that we can roll them out and make our cookies. It's time to roll and shape our pinwheel cookies. So go ahead and line two cookie sheets with parchment paper as I have done here and set those aside. Go ahead and remove one of your dough squares from the fridge. Place it on a floured surface. You're gonna need plenty of flour here so that our dough doesn't stick and as we cut out the cookies, we wanna make sure that the dough doesn't stick to the surface. We're gonna roll the dough out into a rectangle because we're creating rectangle cookies in order to get our pinwheels the shape that we need them. So it's gonna take a little bit of work to roll out your dough. We're rolling your dough out into about an eighth of an inch thick, so it's not very thick. Think of like making sugar cookies, that's really what this is. Once you have your dough rolled out in a rectangle, I chose to do some smaller pieces, but you're gonna need a three inch square, either cookie cutter, or you could use a sharp knife and freehand a square. I actually have, this is a spice container and it's perfectly three inches square. So this works great for me. And then basically you're just stamping out the cookies. And if you have plenty of flour on your surface, they come right out. And then just set them aside until you have a bunch cut out. Once you have some of your cookies cut out from that first sheet, then this is where we make the pinwheels and the filling. So you're gonna take a knife, and they should be able to move easily around the board so you should have plenty of flour. You're gonna cut in each corner about an inch down, just like this, like a little slit, an inch down, which is about halfway between the edge and the center, like so. Okay, so you can see how we have four slits in our cookie. Then here's our prune filling that we made earlier. You want to take a small spoon, like a teaspoon, of the filling. And I like the homemade filling because it mounds very well in the middle of the cookie and it's not going to spread like jam would, like store-bought jam. So that works just right. Now you're going to start with a corner and you're going to fold it in over the jam in the center and press down a little bit. Rotate the cookie. You're gonna skip the next corner, the little slit corner, but you're gonna take the other one. So every other corner, you're just gonna fold in. And then you're going to press down that corner on top of the other corner that you just put in there so that it sticks. Until you've had every other corner in the center sticking, and that creates your pinwheel. How easy would that to get, to get such a, a pretty shape? You can see the filling through the open areas. And then of course, the actual pinwheel looking like a fan. So it's like a 3D, beautiful little cookie there. And that's it, and you need to place it on your cookie sheet. You wanna place your cookies about an inch apart. You should be able to get 12 cookies on a cookie sheet. And then we repeat. Inch down the corners, halfway down towards the center. Place a dollop about a teaspoon of filling in the center. Start with one corner, fold it in and press down. Every other corner you do the same until you have your pinwheel. Depends on how much flour is on the corners, I will often go back for that last one and dab my finger in water. For those of you who are against the plum filling, the prune filling, I also made a half batch with cranberries. So this is a cranberry filling. It's the exact same recipe as the prune, except for I used cranberries. You can definitely see all the seeds in this one, but it works just like the prune, but it'll have a different flavor. It'll have that tartness like a cranberry would have, but you just follow the same procedure as we did with the prune. And this is how you would use any other dried fruit that you would prefer. One cookie sheet is filled, so it's going in the oven for 14 to 15 minutes or until the edges are barely golden brown. Our first batch of cookies are done. 
Notice there's just a touch of brown on the edges and this was at 14 minutes. I like these cookies soft and I like for the bottoms to be brown but the tops to still look pale so that they have that pretty sort of light wintry look but then the tips have a little bit of brown on them so you're getting a little bit of color there. Now that our cookies have cooled for a few minutes just to take a couple and so if you wanted to put this on your cookie platter you could put them on a serving plate and then just sprinkle the tops with powdered sugar. The cookies hold up their shape very well and the filling stays pretty intact. It's a sturdy filling and they are really pretty for a simple shape and they look complicated to make but you saw they are not. So while the bottoms are light brown the tops maintain a pretty white color for the season. The powdered sugar resembles snow for the season at least in the northern hemisphere. I know it's a tender cookie. It's not crunchy. I love the filling, how it just is sort of sticky, but it holds together. The cookie itself is soft. It's got a nice crumb to it. It's tender thanks to the butter and the cream cheese. The filling is chewy. It's a little sticky, but it's perfect for maintaining its shape and for easy eating and transport. Overall, these cookies make wonderful holiday gifts. Store cooled cookies in a sealed container at room temperature for up to a week or in the freezer for up to several months. Now prune filling is traditional to this finished cookie. However, you can add whatever makes you happy. The chewy filling is very mild in flavor, creating a nice marriage with the soft cream cheese cookie. Use other dried fruit for multiple flavors and colors to create a pretty holiday platter. We find these cookies very addicting and hope you agree. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, have a super duper happy holiday season and go bake the world.